Discover the rivalries of the Northern and Southern Dynasties. The Northern and Southern Dynasties was a period of political division during the long history of China that lasted from 420 until 589. It followed the era of the 16 Kingdoms and the Eastern Jin Dynasty. It is sometimes referred to as the latter part of the Six Dynasties of 220 to 589 and was a period of civil war, political chaos, as well as being a time of flourishing arts and culture. Advances in technology as well as the spread of Mahayana Buddhism and Taoism. The Northern and Southern Dynasties was also a time that saw the large-scale migration of Han people to lands south of the Yangtze and came to an end when China was unified once again by Emperor Wen of the Sui Dynasty. The period was split into several smaller periods of individual dynasties. In the north, they were the Northern Way from 386 to 535, the Western Way from 535 to 557, while the Eastern Way was simultaneously in power from 539, 534 to 550, with the Northern Zhou replacing the Western Way in 557 to 581, and the Northern Qi replaced the Eastern Way from 550 to 577. The Southern Dynasties were the Lu Song from 420 to 479, who were replaced by the Southern Qi from 479 until 502. The Liang then took control from 502 to 557, when they were replaced by the Chen from 557 to 589, in power simultaneously with the Western Liang from 555 until 587. During the period, there were notable accelerations in sinicization among non-Han peoples in the north and indigenous ethnicities in the south. There was also an increase in the popularity of Buddhism and Taoism. Technological advances included the invention of the stirrup, which helped create further advances in the development of heavy cavalry. There were also advances in medicine, astronomy, mathematics and cartography. background into the creation of this era. After the collapse of a unified China and the authority of the Eastern Han Dynasty in 220, largely due to uprisings such as the Yellow Turban and Five Pecks of Rice Rebellions, China found itself under the control of no less than three kingdoms. Under these three kingdoms of the Sao Wei, Eastern Wu and Shu Han, there was initially a period of relative calm until a coup orchestrated by Sima Yi in 249 led to the overthrowing of Sao Wei and then the conquest of Shu Han by the new rulers of Sao Wei. Sima Yan, Emperor Wu of Jin, founded the Western Jin Dynasty until that regime itself came under threat due to the War of the Eight Princes. This followed threats to their rule from several northern non-Han peoples known collectively as the Five Barbarians. When the Western Jin Dynasty fell, it was replaced by the Eastern Jin. Although Northern China, the heartland of much of the former Western Jin territory, found itself under the control of several individual warlords, collectively known as the Sixteen Kingdoms. Eventually, the Northern Wei took control of the Northern States in 439 to unify the North. The South under the control of the Eastern Jin until 420, when Liu Ziyu seized the throne from Emperor Gong of Jin, declared himself Emperor Wu of Liu Song, and founded the dynasty of that name. This was the official beginning of a new era for China, known as the Northern and Southern Dynasties. Northern Dynasties The Northern Dynasties began in the year 439, when the Northern Wei took control of Northern China after defeating the Northern Liang. By 589, when this era ended with the emergence of the Sui Dynasty, it could be divi divided into three time periods. The Northern Wei, the Eastern and Western Ways, the Northern Qi and Northern Zhou. The three Wei Dynasties, in addition to the Northern Zhou, were each established by the Xianbei people, while the Northern Qi 
were established by Xianbei influenced Han ethnicity. Previous generations of Han gentry clans had constructed fortified villages in the north, and these family based self defense communities saw the controlling family ruling over peasant families who worked as tenants or serfs to that controlling clan. Northern gentry were highly militarized in comparison to their southern based equals and this distinct difference persisted until well into the following Sui and Tang dynasties. Northern Wei and the rise to power. The Tuolba family of the Xianbei were the rulers of the state of Dai during the 16 kingdoms and although the state was conquered by the former Qin, the subsequent defeat of the former Qin at the Battle of River Fei led to the collapse of that kingdom. Tuolba Shi Yuan was the last prince of Dai. His grandson Tuolba Gui restored the clan fortunes, renamed the state Wei, which later became the Northern Wei. The state capital was installed at Shangla, close to what is today the city of Hohot in Inner Mongolia. Under the early emperors Daowu, Mingyuan and Taiwu, the Northern Wei saw rapid expansion. Under Emperor Daiwu, there were numerous conflicts with the later Yan, which eventually led to their destroying their rival state at the Battle of Kanhe Slope. This led to them conquering the capital of Pingcheng, today's city of Datong. While a successful leader, Daowu, was also a cruel one, which saw his killing by his own son, Torba Shao. But Shao was then overthrown by the crown prince, Torba Su, to become Emperor Mingyuan. One of Mingyuan's achievements during his short period of rule was to conquer the Liu Song province of Hunan before his sudden death. Mingyuan's son, Torba Tao, then became Emperor Tai Wu. An energetic leader under Tai Wu, the strength of the Northern Wei was greatly increased, including repeatedly attacking the Liu Song. While containing the northern threat of the Ruran, he set about uniting northern China. This was achieved in 439 when the kingdom of northern Liang was defeated to bring an end to the tumultuous 16 kingdoms period. Despite this being a time of great military strength for the northern Wei, harassment from the northern tribes to the north, particularly the Ruran, forced attention away from southern expeditions. In the year 450, after quelling most of the northern tribes, Emperor Tai Wu once again turned his attention to attacking the Liu Song, reaching the northern banks of the Yangtze River, separating them from the Liu Song, capital of Jiang Kang, today's city of Nanjing. The Northern Wei, while having a larger army, took heavy casualties and plundered several villages while returning to the north. At around the same time, followers of the Buddhist Gao, Gao Wu rebelled, an uprising that was soon pacified. Under the guidance of his Taoist Prime Minister Sui Hao, Emperor Tai Wu banned Buddhism, the first persecution of Chinese Buddhism known as the Three Disasters of Wu. I will write more about these events in a later video. At the later stages of his life, Emperor Tai Wu began meeting out other cruel punishments actions that led to his death in 452 by a eunuch named Song Ai. His death sparked a period of turmoil that only ended when Emperor Wen Chang ascended to the throne later that year. Wang Yu, an ethnic Chiang court eunuch and a favorite of the Empress Dowager Wen Ming, was an enthusiastic supporter of Buddhism. He constructed caves 9 and 10, the most highly decorated of the young gang grottos and had a temple constructed in 488 at Li Run Feng Yi in today's Chengcheng Shanxi, which was his place of birth according to the Book of Wei. Wang Yu may have been castrated during the 446 suppressions, a Qiang rebellion in which the Northern Wei castrated the young elite of rebel tribes. In the early years of the Northern Wei dynasty, the tribesmen of the Xianbei steppe dominated northern China and kept a strict policy of social distinction between them and the Han. Ethnic Han were given roles in bureaucracy, 
and employed as officials to collect taxes and were kept out of positions of real power. Sinicization of Northern Way Social and cultural transformation was widespread under Emperor Xiao Wen, who ruled from 471 until 499, whose father was a Xianbei and mother Han. Although a member of the Torba clan from the Xianbei tribe, Emperor Xiao Wen asserted his dual identity, even renaming his own clan Yuan. In 493, Emperor Xiao Wen instituted a new signification program that instructed the elite of the Xianbei to conform to Han standards. These reforms included the donning of Han style clothing. Xianbei clothing was banned within the royal court. Learning the Han language, those over 30 were exempt from this ruling. Converting Xianbei family names to one character Han surnames and encouraging the intermarriage between high ranking Xianbei families and Han. The capital city was also moved under the direction of the emperor from Pingchang to one of China's most ancient imperial sites at Luoyang. Luoyang had been the capital during the Eastern Han and Western Jin dynasties, and the new capital was revived and transformed. Nearly 150,000 Xianbei and other northern tribes made the journey south by the year 495 to live in the new capital. Within just a few decades, the population of Liuoyang had risen to around half a million residents and was also famous for being the location of more than 1,000 Buddhist temples. Defectors from the south were made welcome and mostly accommodated in the Wu quarter of the city, served tea in preference to the yogurt drinks more commonly consumed in northern China. In 523, Prince Dongyang of the Northern Wei was sent to serve in Dunhuang as his governor for the next 15 years. With Buddhism gaining main, mainstream acceptance within Chinese society, once again, the prince, alongside wealthy local families, began a monumental project to honor Buddhism, carving and decorating Cave 285 of the Mogwa Caves with beautiful statues and murals. This promotion of the arts will continue for centuries at Dunhuang, making the site one of China's most visited tourist attractions today. The division into the Eastern Way and the Western Way. In the year 523, a revolt known as the Rebellion of the Six Garrisons broke out across several military garrisons to the north of Luoyang and caused by, by a shortage of food supplies. Once the rebellion was suppressed, the government allowed 200,000 surrendered rebels to be redeployed to Hebei. This move later proved to be a mistake when a former garrison officer organized another rebellion in 526-7. The main reason for this second rebellion was the growing rift between the governing aristocracy and the increased hand-style policy against the lifestyle of the largely nomadic tribal armies wanting to preserve the old steppe way of life. The Northern Way court was betrayed by one of its own generals who ordered the Empress Dowager and young Emperor thrown into the Yellow River while adopting his own puppet ruler to maintain authority. As the conflict continued in the north between leaders, Gao Han took control in the east, including Luoyang, holding Emperor Xiao Jing of Eastern Wei as a puppet ruler in 534. Meanwhile, his rival Yu Wentai took control of the west and the former Chinese capital of Chang'an in 535. The western regime was dominated by Sinicide's nobles and the Han bureaucrats, while the eastern regime was under the control of the traditional steppe tribes. Northern Qi and Northern Zhou. Eventually, Gao Huan's son, Gao Yang, forced the Emperor of Eastern Wei to abdicate. In doing so, the Northern Qi dynasty was created in 551. A few years later, Yu Wintai's son, Yu Wenju, seized the throne from Emperor Gong of Western Wei to establish the Northern Zhou dynasty in 557. The Northern Qi inherited the primary recruiting grounds of the Northern Wei army. Five out of every six Northern Wei military officers had previously come from the Eastern Territories, particularly from the local armed forts of Han military families, both men and women, 
they were expert horse riders and archers. Just like its predecessor, the Western Way, the Northern Zhou was against sinicization and tried to revive the Xianbei warrior culture. They revived Xianbei tunics, trousers and boots, reverted back to Xianbei names, even giving Xianbei names to Han soldiers. This policy of tribalization was intended to recruit large numbers of Han Chinese recruits into their army, who would pay for their own equipment, which gave them tax exemptions. This policy was highly successful in boosting the military strength of the Northern Zhou. The Northern Zhou dynasty defeated the Northern Qi in 577 to reunify the North. However, this was short-lived success, as the Northern Zhou was then overthrown in 581 by, by Yan Jian, who became Emperor Wen of Sui. A combination of greater military power and morale, together with convincing propaganda that Chen Chubao was a decadent ruler who had lost the mandate of heaven, gave the Sui dynasty the moral compass to conquer the south. After this conquest, the whole of China was reunified under a golden age of the Sui dynasty, a short-lived dynasty that was soon replaced by the Tang dynasty. The Southern Dynasties In the south, the Jin were succeeded by a series of short-lived dynasties. Liu Song 420-479 Southern Qi 479-502 Liang 502-557 and the Chen 557 to 589. As they all had their capital at Jiang Kang, with a brief exception from 552 to 555, they are sometimes grouped together with the Eastern Wu and Eastern Jin under the term the Six Dynasties. The rulers of these short lived dynasties were generals who seized, then held on to power for several decades, but were unable to pass that power on to their heirs to continue the dynasty. Emperor Wu of Liang was the most notable ruler of this era, being a patron of arts and of Buddhism. The southern dynasties, with the exception of the final dynasty, the Chen, were strongly dominated by the Shijia, or the great families who monopolized the political power of the mid-6th century in China. This class was created by Cao Cao during the late Han dynasty, when, in an attempt to consolidate his power, he built a military caste of professional soldiers. This policy led to the rise and then fall of the Sima family when they established the Jin dynasty. Subsequent leaders were unable to bring other great families in line. The flight south of the Jin dynasty further exacerbated the weakness of central government as the great families accompanied the emperor in fleeing. With the increased importance of proving one's pedigree to receive privileges, there was a rise in the compiling of family or genealogy records, with the great families moving to outlaw intermarriage with common families. The lower class northern migrants were considered guests of the great families and not as their equals. When the Eastern Jin attempted to draft the dependence of the great families, the court was quickly overthrown. However, when the Eastern Jin fell in 420, there was a shift in the balance of power away from central government. The dynasties of Liu Song, Qi, Liang and Chen were each ruled by military leaders from lower social backgrounds. These regimes stripped the power, authority and wealth of the most powerful clans and with emperors stationing regional armies under the command of their imperial relatives and recruited officers from more humble backgrounds and even appointed low-ranking officials to monitor the more powerful elites in top government positions. The southern aristocracy found itself in decline during the mid-5th century due to the rise in trade across the Indian Ocean. This led to court revenues shifting towards trade as landowning aristocrats were unable to convert cash from the produce of their estates. This caused them to break up and sell their land to the increasingly affluent merchant classes who became even more prosperous through their occupying political office, displacing the old aristocrats. At the lower end of the social scale, economics drove peasants unable to survive from the land 
to become mercenary soldiers, selling their services to warring princes and plundering the country. This devastated the south as it eventually fell to the Sui dynasty. The Liu Song The founder of the Liu Song dynasty, Liu Yu, was originally a soldier of the army of the northern garrison that won the notable Battle of Fei River in 383. In 404, he helped to suppress Huan Chuan's rebellion that led to his dominance of the Eastern Jin court. In order to gain enough popularity to take the throne, he led expeditions against the 16 kingdoms, capturing Shandong, Hernan, and then briefly Guangzhou by 416. After crowning himself Emperor Wu after deposing Emperor Gong in 420, he effectively ended the Eastern Jin Dynasty to create his own, the Liu Song. Not trusting well-educated people, he felt nobility had too much power. He tended to appoint the lower classes to government positions and give military power to those experienced in battle. If any of the imperial kinsmen, once given power, showed too much interest in gaining power, he had them killed before they had a chance to use that power against him. This became evident after the death of Emperor Wu. His son, Emperor Xiao, was judged as being incompetent and killed by government officials. He was then replaced by another of Wu's sons, Emperor Wen, who soon executed the officials that had installed him as him emperor. The reign of Emperor Wen was one of relative political stability because of his good governing and became known as the reign of Yuan Jia. In the year 430, Emperor Wen launched a series of northern expeditions against the Northern Wei. These were mostly ineffective because of insufficient preparation and excessive micromanagement of his generals that increasingly weakened his dynasty. From 445, the Northern Wei took advantage of the weakened state of the Liu Song and made advances on what is today Shandong, Hebei and Hernan. Emperor Wen was assassinated in 453 by Crown Prince Xiao and Second Prince John after he accused them of witchcraft. They were then killed by Third Prince John, who became Emperor Xiao Wu. There were several stories circulating about Xiao Wu's behavior, including committing incest with the daughters of his uncle, even having sexual relations with his mother. When Xiao Wu died naturally in 464, he was succeeded by his son, who became Emperor Qian Fei. Qian Fei had similar qualities to his father in both sexual relations with and the killing of his kin. A sister of Qian Fei complained how it was unfair that men were permitted to have 1,000 concubines, and so he presented his sister with 30 handsome men as her lovers. He was eventually assassinated by his uncle, Liu Yu, the prince of Shangdong, who Qian Fei had called the Prince of Pigs for his obesity. As Emperor Ming, Liu Yu began his reign by killing all descendants of Emperor Xiao Wu as the dynasty lost more land to the north. Ming's son became Emperor Hu Fei during a time of political uncertainty. Hu Fei was deposed by General Xiao Dao Cheng, who instilled Hu Fei's brother as emperor before forcing him to yield the throne and crowned himself Emperor Gao of Southern Qi, thus bringing an end to the Liu Song dynasty. The Southern Qi Though distantly related, the Southern Qi and the Liang dynasty were both members of the Xiao family from Lanling Lan, Lan in modern-day Sanshan County, Shandong. Emperor Gao had a low social standing and saw in the disdain of nobility. His style of governance was similar to that of the early Liu Song and very economical. However, he died in just the fourth year of his reign. His heir, who was just 13 younger than him, became Emperor Wu of Southern Qi. Wu made peace with the Northern Wei, and this became known as the Yongming administration. Upon his death, and having his only son die before him, the role of emperor was passed on to his grandsons, Xiao Zhaoyu and Xiao Zhaowen. Both were dominated by Xiao Lua, a first cousin of the late emperor. Xiao Luan killed both heirs to the throne and crowned himself Emperor Ming of Southern Qi. He then had all the sons of Emperors Gao 
and Wu executed, becoming a follower of Taoism, only wore the color red before becoming ill and dying in the year 498. His son, Xiao Bao Jun, succeeded him and his biggest claim to fame was for killing high officials and governors at whim. This sparked several revolts. The final revolt that took place in 501 began after Xiao Bao Jian had his Prime Minister Xiao Yi killed, which led to revolt, revolt by his brother Xiao Yan, which led to the brother of the Emperor being declared Emperor He of Southern Qi. Xiao Bao Yan was killed by one of his generals during a siege of his capital, Jiang Kang. After a short period of Emperor He being a puppet leader, Xiao Yan overthrew the Southern Qi and established the Liang Dynasty. Liang Dynasty. Emperor Wu was economical, hardworking, and cared for the common people under his command. His early reign became known as the reign of Tian Jia. The military strength of the Liang gradually surpassed that of the Northern Wei, who suffered an internal strife caused by sinicization. In 503, the Northern Wei invaded but were defeated at Zhongli. The Liang reached a cultural peak because Emperor Wu was very learned, supported scholars, and encouraged the flourishing educational system. An avid poet, the Emperor would often gather literary talents at the royal court and hold poetry competitions with prizes of gold or silk to those he considered the best. In his latter years, however, he was surrounded by sycophants. On three occasions, he dedicated his life to Buddhism, wanting to become a monk, but on each occasion, he was persuaded to remain in the royal court after extravagant court donations were given to Buddhism. At that time, Buddhists and Taoists were exempt from taxes. Nearly half the population fraudulently named themselves as such. This badly damaged finances in addition to the greed and wasteful practices of imperial clansmen and officials. Emperor Wu accepted generals that had defected from Northern Wei. When Northern Wei suffered major revolts in the northern garrison towns, his general Chen Qingzi was sent to support Yuan Hao. Despite only being given 7,000 soldiers, Chen managed to inflict heavy defeats on the Northern Wei, but Chen was ins insufficiently resupplied and eventually defeated by an army ten times that of his own. When the Northern Wei split into Eastern and Western Wei, asylum was granted to rebel Eastern Wei commander Hao Jing, and he was sent on expeditions to the north against the Eastern Wei. After some initial successes, Liang forces were defeated, and it was rumored that Emperor Wu would hand over Hao as a priest peace offering. Hao then besieged the Liang capital at Jiang Kang, in which the emperor was forced to agree a ceasefire and deal for peace. However, Hao felt that such a deal was not sustainable, so attacked the palace that led to the slaughter of much of the local population. Emperor Wu was starved to death, and after the short puppet reigns of Crown Prince Xiao Gang and Xiao Dong, Hao seized power and established the Han Dynasty. Despite controlling the capital and its surrounding areas, the remaining lands under the Lang Liang dynasty remained under the control of the imperial clan. They squabbled among themselves, which in turn weakened any efforts to subdue Hao. Eventually, Xiao Yi defeated Hao and declared himself Emperor Yuan of Liang. However, his brother Xiao Ji, based in Sichuan, was still a major threat to his remaining in control. Emperor Yuan requested assistance from Western Wei to remove his brother, but instead he incited the anger of Yu and Tai, the leading general of Western Wei, which eventually led to Yuan being deposed and dying. The puppet state of Western Liang was set up by Western Wei, while the Northern Qi had designs on taking the Liang throne. The Qi set up Xiao Fangzi, the last surviving son of the Emperor Yuan, as a Liang ruler, but he was not given the imperial title. Internal conflicts within both the Qi and Wei over who should rule the Liang led to Chen Bashian claiming the title of Emperor Wu of Chen 
in 557. Chen Emperor Wu of Chen came from the region of Wu, close to what is today the city of Shanghai. At the time of the Hu Jing Rebellion, the Chiao and Wu clans found themselves greatly weakened as several independent regimes emerged. The sudden death of Wu led to his nephew Chen Chiang taking power as Emperor Wen of Chen. After the fall of the Liang dynasty, General Wang Lin had established an independent kingdom in what is today the provinces of Hunan and Hubei and was causing problems for other small kingdoms. Wang Lin allied himself with the Northern Zhou and Northern Qi to conquer the Chen capital of Jiang Kang. Emperor Wen defeated the combined forces of Northern Qi and Wang Lin before halting the advances of Northern Zhou at Yuyang. Through his extensive efforts on both the battlefield and good governance, he was able to restore his fledgling kingdom's national strength. Following Emperor Wen's death, his son, the weak-willed Chen Bozong, became Emperor Fei of Chen. His uncle, Chen Shu, was effectively in control and soon deposed him as Emperor Xuan of Chen. At that time, the Northern Zhou asked for the assistance of the Chen dynasty in conquering the Northern Qi. Xuan agreed to this as it meant he could reclaim some lands previously lost to the south of the Huai River. In 573, he sent General Wu Minchu to assist the Northern Zhou, who in two years had managed to recover those lost territories. Only wanting to retake those territories and not pursue the remaining lands held by the weakened Northern Qi, the Northern Zhou instead took those lands to the south of the Hui River for themselves by defeating the Chen and leaving the Chen dynasty in great danger of invasion. With a stroke of luck for the Chen, Emperor Wu of the Northern Zhou died suddenly and internal strife put any invasion plans on hold. But once Yang Jian defeated his rivals to become Emperor Jing of Northern Zhou and eventually established the Sui dynasty, then becoming Emperor Wen of Sui, he then began an invasion of the south, waiting until the annual harvest was ready to collect and burning the farmland thus crippling the strength of the Chen dynasty. In 588, Emperor Wen sent his son, Yan Guang, to complete the capture of the Chen, who relied on the natural barrier of the Yangtze River to protect them. Once this barrier was crossed, the Chen capital of Jiang Kang was taken, and the Chen dynasty ended swiftly. Conclusion A combination of greater military power and morale together with convincing propaganda that Chen Shibao was a decadent ruler who had lost the mandate of heaven, gave the Sui dynasty the moral compass to conquer the south. After this conquest, the whole of China was reunified under a golden age of the Sui dynasty, a short-lived dynasty that was soon replaced by the Tang dynasty. The core elite of the northern dynasties, mixed culture and mixed ethnicity military clans would later also form the founding elites of the Sui and Tang dynasties. Hence, they tended to have a flexible approach to steppe nomads, viewing them as possible partners rather than intrinsic enemies. That is all for this video. If you have enjoyed watching and it has shown you a little detail of life here in China, then your subscribing to my channel would mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching, make sure you click on the link to the next video and until the next time, goodbye for now.